and he is a trader in the LBMA in London, which is a metals exchange. And he overheard a drunken conversation in London from people who we know work for J.P. Morgan Chase as to when they were going to rig the market and how they were going to do it. He turned the information over to the CFTC. They did nothing about it, said nothing about it. So he had Gatter expose the situation at the April meeting. Now the Justice Department has a criminal investigation against Morgan, which I expect to go no more, nowhere because they're part of the Illuminati as well. And the CFTC, quote, is investigating it. It's been three months now, and they have all the evidence. Believe me, they do. And uh, lurking in the background are lawsuits, and these will be class action by several firms. And when they're coming, I don't know, but I'm in close touch with somebody in New York who's in close touch with them. And so that should be exposed. And what it is, Morgan would say that they were working for the government, and the government was the one that did it, so you can't do anything to us. But they will be fined, and they'll stop them from doing it. So that's on the agenda. So the world is short of silver. It's going to get worse over the next several years until it's, the inventory has gone and it'll explode. Morgan is going to be exposed for rigging the market, and they're also making, rigging the gold market. And today, as some of you may know, uh, we had a up day in gold and silver. Gold was up $11 at 12.4510, and silver was up 25 cents at 18.73. Um, today was gold and silver option expiration. And what these criminals do on COMEX in behalf of the United States government is that they rig the market and, and they do sell these options. And what, the, and what they want each month when they expire is for the options to buy gold, to buy silver, to expire worthless. So the price of gold and silver are higher than the majority of the option strike prices. They deliberately and criminally drive it down. The CFTC stands there and does nothing. <coughs> well, today, they got their heads handed to them again. <clears throat> and there's a group out there, and I don't know who they are, but they wait for the, you know, the last day on the options, and then they go into this, the physical market and drive the gold price up so that Morgan and HSBC and Goldman Sachs and Citigroup and Deutsche Bank get caught with their pants down, lose a pile of money. Unfortunately, you, the American taxpayer, has to pay for it. But the point is, they get creamed today. They probably lost billions of dollars. And gold is headed higher, I can promise you that, as well as silver. Long explanation, but you get the background. Okay, I got I, my mic went dead. Uh, oh, okay. Here. Well, that and means that... Should we get out of gold and silver stocks and go only into physical bullion gold and silver coins? No, no, I don't think that's a good idea. The real money is made in gold and silver shares. And a deflationary depression between 1929 and 1940, gold doubled. The price of Homestead, which was bought out not too long ago by Barrick Gold, went from $30 a share to $636 a share. During the inflationary recession between 1978 and 1981, the average gold and silver stock went up 40 times more than gold bullion. You want to be 30% in gold and silver coins or bullion and 70% in the shares. And the most lucrative investment in the gold coins is mint state graded numismatic coins. Don't buy numismatic coins that are not graded because all they are is bullion coins. And the deal is try to mark them way up and screw you. Hmm. And you hit the nail on the head there. We have seen this, ladies and gentlemen. It's just like there are seed guys out there that are selling you massive amount of seeds, and they're selling you seeds that are two and three years old, telling you you've got a good buy. 
stop and think about what you're buying. Non heart non hot uh uh hydro um non hybrid seeds are just like gold and silver bullion coins. Be careful of what you're buying. Understand. If you've got money to invest, Bob Chapman will give you advice. He will help you. Give him an email. Send it to his email at Bob at I-N-T. That's India, Nancy, Tango, Forecaster. F-O-R-E. C-A-S-T-E-R, Forecaster.com. And while you're at it, thank him for the time that he comes out here to give you this insight information up front. Mr. Chapman, going on, uh, we're, we're in the middle of a thunderstorm here, and we're having some communication from him. So if I go away, you're on the air. Uh, you may have a Russian girl chime in to you, but you just keep on talking. Uh, <laughs> the uh, uh, new home sales in the United States have plunged 33% to a record low. Uh, as you have said in the past, this is just a precipice of what is, is to come. Uh, is this a, a new point on the top of the pin that is about to really collapse the market in the United States, or is this just uh, another another one of those slow slurges taking the market down? Well, I think that the bankers and, of course, the administration are – absolutely befuddled as to what to do. Uh, the people are screaming. I don't think they ever expected that. And the foreclosures are going to continue. Now, uh, word came out yesterday that the FDI, uh, the, that Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, Ginnie Mae, and FHA want to penalize people who walk away from their homes because they're underwater and they're not having financial problems. If they do that, they might have a revolution on their hands. Now, they floated another idea today, and that was leaving people in their homes and letting them pay rent. They should have done that on day one. Now, as far as new homes are concerned, if they try to be punitive with people who go to foreclosure because they're underwater, and 75% of current mortgage holders will go underwater, before the, before this is over. If they do that, no one will buy any home anywhere. So that's going to backfire on them. Dumb. But that's what they are. They think they're smart, but they're not. The builders are still building over a half a million homes a year. They need their heads examined. We're short all of the builders and have been for the last three years. I mean, one of them we did at $84. It's selling for 15 I mean, that's what shorts are all about. But I don't recommend shorting to people who are novices in the market. You shouldn't do it. And if you've got any questions, just if you're ask not a me. Short, you need you to I personally view point, but Mr. Chapman, is if somebody's going to short, they need to be talking to you personally on a day-to-day basis. Well, That's I don't know problem. about day to day, but uh, I got to talk to them. You ain't got that much time. Uh, you ain't got that much time. No, you, 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 you've got to be, world. you've got to be hardcore. You got to have experience. Uh, you got to be able to take losses like it was nothing at all. And uh, believe me, if, if you want help in that area, let me know. But generally speaking, ninety-five percent of the public shouldn't be doing it. But anyway, uh, getting back to housing, now listen to this. Normal housing inventory is four months. Right now it's about nine months, maybe ten, officially. In the next, let's see, 11, 12. In the next two and a half years, that figure of monthly inventory available for resale will range anywhere from 3 million to 8 million, which will be from 3 years to 8 years. I've seen different figures higher than mine. I said a 3-year inventory. Others are talking 4, 6, and 8. So mine's pretty conservative numbers. But it's going to be disastrous. 
Housing prices are going down at least until 2012 June or 2013, just based on the foolishness that they've just done. And it's going to get a lot worse. You do not want to buy a house. If you want to be a seller and you can get out, do so. Because housing is not going to go up in value. In fact, those with mortgages, I think all of those homes will be nationalized and rented out by the government. And I wrote about that six years ago. And I, when I said Freddie, Freddie and Fannie were broke, which they were. And now, you know, the government owns them, which means the American taxpayer has got to pay for them. The point here is you stay away from housing. 